Okay, I this little 5x7, I've already got it toned. Uh, I, I, paint medium and a little bit of my, uh, of my warm mud from my palette. Now, I have this really awful picture up here of the sawtooth. There's almost no contrast in it. If I squint at this, there's three shapes. There's this ground, there's the mountains, and there's the sky. I can hardly see all these, all these foothills in the front. Uh, the, it's, this foreground is really, really boring. So what I'm going to do, I, I kind of like to take really bad photographs like that and turn them in to nice paintings. What I'm going to do now is do a quick value study of this. Uh, and I'm going to make and I'm going to make corrections along the way. First thing I'm going to do is get this get that the, this horizon line here, this line for my foreground. I'm going to move that up a bit proportionally. I'm going to move it up to right about the third the third line. Put that the, the third of the way up the canvas. Okay, now these foothills I can see start. The foothills, you, you may not even be able to see them because uh, this photograph is so bad, but the foothills come up and they, they come across the canvas like that. Then I've got the, these sawtooth mountains, which I've got one coming in here. This kind of comes across. There's some that are that will be kind of in the background across here. Then this other, then the mountain kind of comes up here, comes over, and I'm going to put this, this tall mountain I'm going to put it as close, you know, fairly close to the uh, to the right-hand thirds line, and that is going to come down. And then I then I don't want this I don't want this downstroke at the edge of the canvas. So I'm going to bring my foothill shape up a little bit to counteract that that downstroke at the end. Now I'm going to take some creative liberties here, and I'm going to put I'm going to I'm going to throw a cup I'm going to Put a few trees here in the foreground. This, you know, just to I want some foliage and stuff here just to create some interest in this painting. That that gives the if you have a strong foreground thing, it gives the viewer a place to stand. Okay, now my drawing is basically done. I've got this foreground area right here. I've got this land area here, two, second shape. Foothills are my third shape. Mountains are my fourth shape. And the sky is my fifth shape. You, you, you really, at the first step of the painting, you're going to create the mood. No detail, just the mood. So I'm going to start out, things standing upright in the foreground are generally the darkest value. And those trees are going to be in the green family, so I'm taking some cool blue and some cool yellow, and I'm mixing it with a little bit of my cool mud, a little paint medium, and so now I'm gonna now I'm going to uh, just kind of block in these trees, and you know, I, you know I'm making trees, so I you know I am making shapes, but I'm not stopping to, you know, th these trees are by no means finished. They're just I'm just getting something really dark in the foreground. We've got that tree. I've got a you know, put a little shorter tree right here. The thing you want to watch for in your trees is you don't want them, see I'm dangerously close here to having four amigos, they're all kind of equally shaped, equally uh, distributed, so I'm going to bring this tree in a little closer. I, I want these to be random. Now this one over here I think I'll make another, maybe another tall tree, but this tree should probably be taller. I don't want any of my trees the same height, I don't want them to be the same distance from each other. So, so there I've got, so I've got a kind of little space here. I've got a large area here. This is almost the same, but the tree is so much shorter. Then this tree in here is way short, is way uh, closer in. Now, if you do get into a a situation where you've you've got your trees evenly spaced, uh, a good way to re remedy that is to come back in and put another tree next to one of your other trees. See, I don't want to come in and put a tree right in the middle here. I want to make, make it closer to one of the other trees. So there's, see, now I can throw a little, you know, have a little couple of bushes down in here. There's my first shape blocked in. Now I'm going, I'm going to go back into space. 
So now I'm going to add some blue to this green and I'm putting a little bit of white in it. A little yellow. I found, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of doing a distant blue green and I found that if I put a little yellow in it, my greens tend, or I put a little red in my greens, they tend to look more natural. Now I'm going to paint this foothill area across the back. I'm going to start it right here. Let's see, I, could, I put it right next to those colors and I don't have it light enough. See, I don't want to start out here and by the time I get over here find out I have the wrong value. What I'm doing now is, is creating the distance, the sense of distance. That's still awfully close. I can see the difference, but I'll, I'll kick it up just a little bit in case you can't see it on camera. So I'm starting in here between the trees. Uh, you know, I'm stepping this, 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 is, this is my verticals going back. So now I can, I'm taking the, going across with these foothills. Now, whether you're doing a big painting or a small painting, this is your first step, is to block in your values. This is how you get the sense of atmosphere in your painting. Okay, so that's, so now these trees are, if I squint, I can see these trees are darker than the, the this is a, a timber covered foothill back here. So these trees are darker, these are a little lighter. Now I'm going up to the mountains, and the mountains are above the tree line. So I want to get away from the greens, so I'm putting some, I'm taking white, and I'm putting some blue and yellow. Now, a lot of times, you know, I can look at those, those trees, or I mean, those mountains are, are fairly blue. I'll put a little more blue in them. The further the mountains are away, the more blue is in them because, because of the atmosphere. Now, again, I'm going to start right here and to see it, make sure that color is a little lighter. I'm going to make it just a little bit lighter than that. I'm using, I'm using cool blue and cool red to make these mountains. I don't want trees on these mountains, so I don't want them green. Okay, I've got, there's that mountain, and then there's these little sawtoothy things that are coming across. Fill that mountain in. You see, the important thing with this, with this mountain is to, is this edge. I want to make sure that this, this mass is lighter than that mass. That's how I make that mass go back into shape, into space. Okay, now in the photograph, it's kind of hard to tell from the photograph, but this mountain here, down in here, is further away still. So I'm going to take some white and a little blue. Things, things, as things go back into space, they're lighter and bluer. And then I'm going to, a little lighter than that. And I'll make this, this background mountain here lighter and bluer than that mountain. And it's a really it's a really fine difference. I don't know if you can even see it on the camera. Maybe I should lighten it a little more to make sure it's visible. Because I want this mountain to go back further. Okay, so there I've got my this is my darkest value in here, my foreground verticals. Then I go to here. It's a little lighter. And where this is green, a muddy green, this is a blue green then this is more of a purple, and then this mountain back here is more of a blue. Now I'm going to uh, go back into my green, so I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of white and cool yellow. White and maybe a, just a touch of red, just to give a little, make that green look a little more natural. And then I'm going to start my back, my, my, for, my horizontal. So I'm going to start that right here. That's got to be just a little lighter. Generally, I want this horizontal area down here to be lighter than that mountain. Let me see here. I'll get this all blocked in across here. So, so you, can, you can start to see the distance. Yeah, my darkest value here then I go lighter, then I go lighter, then I go lighter, then I go lighter, and now I'm going to do the sky, and it's the lightest. 
So now, now I have to really, I have to stop and clean my brush. When you start your sky, clean your brush really, really good, or it's a good idea to have a clean brush on hand so that you can, so because you don't want to get your sky dirty. Now, for the sky, I have to have some really clean white, and I'm going to start with some warm blue. This In my block in, generally the bottom of the sky will, you know, by and large be the, my first warm color that I use. In the block in, is probably the only warm color I use. Now I'm going to start down here at the bottom. I'm not starting up here and working down to the mountain. I'm starting at the bottom of the sky and I'm trying not to touch the mountain or the trees because if I touch the mountain or the trees with my brush I'll get a muddy sky. So what I want to do is see, I'll get up close to those and then when I come back and paint the mountains and the trees I'll paint them into the sky. I'll overlap into the sky. So the, I'm, my bottom part of my sky is, war, is warm blue and white. And that's, that's my viridian, my warm blue. And then uh, and make, sure, you know, make sure you're not holding your brush like this. Make sure you're holding your brush. See, with, see I'm holding my brush like this. I can, you know, I can change direction. I can push, pull. I can use the blade. I can use the, the edge. Uh, I can even use the tip if I want to. But generally, the tip of the brush... By and large, it's pretty worthless. It, it it flattens quickly. It doesn't hold paint well. Uh, you know, you're you're better off using the body of your of the brush. Okay, now that's that's my warm blue. Now I'm going to take a little tiny bit of cool blue to mix in with my warm blue, and then I'm going to go up into my upper part of the sky. The sky goes light is lighter, warmer at the bottom, darker, cooler at the top. Now, if if you notice, let's see here. Let me get this kind of feathered together here. Get a little bit of texture to the sky. Get some of these colors kind of running into each other. So you can see now, see if you look at the look at the painting up here, uh, you can maybe see that you know the ground, that big mass of the mountains, those dashes of snow, and the sky. Here you can see the trees in the foreground, the, the land going back to the foothills, and then the mountains beyond the foothills. Once I have every painting should be broken down to somewhere between, I'd say, three and seven shapes. Fewer than three shapes, it's w getting way too simple and it's going to bore the viewer. If you get many more than seven shapes, seven primary shapes, you're going to be too complicated and the viewer isn't going to be able to, to it's going to be too confusing for the viewer to look at your painting. So with this, I've got this one shape, here is my foreground. Second shape is, is my background. Third shape is my way background. And then this mountain would be a, a subshape of this shape. So I'm going to count this, the mountains all as one shape. So I got one, two, three, foreground, four, and sky is five, which, which makes for a, a, nice, a nice comfortable number of shapes. Now I'm going to come back through the painting and I'm going to start up top of the sky. here and it seems like every time I every time I start finishing a sky uh, I my in my mind I go back to Carlson if you don't have a copy of Carlson's guide to landscape paintings get it it's it's if there was only one book you could afford about landscape painting Carlson's guide would be the one he he really does a good job in it of explaining how light works and uh, the, the book is also a good sleep aid. It's uh, it's pretty it's 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 the language in it is fairly archaic. It was written a long time ago. The illustrations in it are black and white because it was back in the age when color printing was prohibitively expensive. 
but get, get that book and I mean, and devour that book. Read it. I'd say, you know, I find I read it about every six months, and every every time I read it, I find stuff I didn't know, I didn't that I missed the first time through. Okay, so now I'm going to find a I'm going to I'm going to find a little smaller brush. I'm going to I'm going to play with the mountain a little bit now. Okay, so now now what I want to do, I'm going to take some white and some blue, and I want to start this this background mountain first. And part of the thing when you're you know I, I block in, and then when I come through finishing, it's time to make you know slight adjustments in my in my values. Okay, so I can come into and see I'm overlapping I'm overlapping into the sky. If I if I drag some of these highlights if I drag some of these highlights uh, down out of the sky, it'll just you know make a highlight on the mountain. If I drag the mountain color into the sky, it makes a dirty sky. So I just I wait until I'm finishing my mountain, then I overlap to kill that halo I've left around the mountain. Okay, now I'm going to go back. Let's see here. I'm going to take some white. I'm making a lighter a lighter blue, a lot of white, and now I'm I'm going to put some little snow banks. And they're not going to be, you know, heavy spotlights like they are in the reference piece. I want these I want these to go back. Photography really is difficult. You you can't really most I know with my photographs, I can't trust my photographs for value. You know, I can, you know, I I, I use photographs to get the image, get the kind of the architecture of a mountain. But I don't use my photographs for, uh, for uh, to, to 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 follow the values. The values just don't just don't work. I've got to grab another paper towel. Okay, so now I'm now I'm going to go to the big mountains. So now I'm going to this. Adjust my purple just a little bit. I, yeah, I want a little more contrast with these background mountains, so I'm going to darken this just a little bit. My, you know, my instructor was. I remember him explaining to me once. You know, you you do your block in, get the get your block in nice, and then from that point on, you're pretty much repairing things. You're making you're you're fixing your mistakes. Now go up to that. Taller peak, and see how I'm overlapping. I'm crossing over the the line that I had of these mountains. I'm I'm overlapping that line. And now I've got this other mountain coming in from the other side. <clears throat> okay, and now that mountain doesn't really you know, here. There's not really much snow on it. What I'm gonna, one of the things I'm going to do now, I'm going to take some white and I'm going to put a little bit of my warm red. My warm red is cadmium red yellow. I'm going to take a little bit of that with some white and kind of mixing it back into my purple a little bit to see how, see how much contrast there is. And now I can see my, my sunlight is coming from the right. So, so I'm just going to throw some warm highlights on the right hand side of the mountain. I'm not going to bother with a lot of detail on this on the uh, shadow side of the mountain. It's a, this is you know kind of a, a late afternoon thing. You wouldn't see probably a lot into the shadows. Now when you're doing these mountains, when you're doing these highlights on the, the warm highlights, don't leave a shadow on on the right hand side. Take your overlap actually overlap your brush into the sky. So you get that light really striking the edge of the mountain. If you don't do that, what'll happen is it'll look like the mountain is sloping back and then stands up right at the end. And now, okay, now I'll do the same thing over here. I'll throw a few highlights on this mountain. <clears throat> and now, one of the things I can do here too, I'll just, uh, this is a little sidebar, but if you're doing snow on the mountain, See what I can do now is I can take white and cool blue 
and say this area right in here on this mountain right here I can see on the see I'm, I'm on the purple part of the mountain I'm putting doing just kind of some little snow like down in that along that crease okay then I've got that highlight that warm the warm little part of the mountain right here so what I can do now now is put some warm white I'm just putting some white in that warm yellow warm red that I had on the mountain for the highlight and I can put right in there and see how that that makes just a beautiful little spot of snow on the mountain since I have snow on these back here I should probably have you know a little bit of snow on those mountains then once those are done I can come down and just test test some color here let's see I want a little more blue in that and I can And I, you know, and I think those are all, it's, this thing is a long ways away, but I still want to do mostly vertical brush strokes so that it just kind of has the texture of trees. Because I, I know from being up in the Sawtooth that these mountains are just, are pretty much, the foothills are covered with trees. They're in a really dense forest. Now, a little trick to make those trees come forward is I make this a little darker as, they, as it comes down to the bottom. Now it's, it's really difficult to put dark color over a lighter color. The, the lighter color just kind of swallows up the dark color. But doing it this way, see I, I want there to be just a subtle change so I can, I can make that difficulty kind of work for me. So there, you can kind of see how those mount because those those trees are darker at the bottom, they kind of come forward. Now I can now I'm going to get in and and just play with this uh, with this foreground. I'll put a little more yellow, a little white in this, a little red. What all I, what I really want with this foreground area is just to make it kind of interesting. Now one of the things you don't want is a straight edge between the trees and the foreground. See if I if I make it kind of jaggedy like that it's like you can almost see back into the forest. It gives the viewer a lot of little little interesting stops to do too. Now I'm going to throw a little more red in that just to just a little bit of red never hurts when you're working with a lot of green. Green can really kind of overpower your your composition. Now Another little thing I'm going to do here as as the 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 uh, my foreground can get darker as it comes forward, or it can get lighter. It's horizontal; it can get lighter or darker as it comes forward. But it should do one or the other, uh, so it doesn't feel like it's standing up. That that gradation in value is what makes it appear to come forward. So then now I can get back in and mix some of this really dark cool green that I started with and uh, and then I can start putting in these trees and these trees see I just barely barely touch the canvas if I touch the canvas very hard at all I'm gonna get a tree that looks like it's 30 feet wide and remember when you're doing pine trees pine trees aren't symmetrical they're balanced. If you know if they hang out on one side, they're going to hang out that much on it on the other side somewhere, but not necessarily right straight across. Now, see, I'm I, I'm having trouble keeping the darkness in my color because I'm going over all that light color that's behind the trees. So I have to keep getting fresh dark paint in my brush. So I'll keep okay, and see now. See how that tree shape stopped right there, where that where this forest ends. That tree either has to stop down here or go above. If if I stop it right at the tree line, it's just going to confuse the viewer. If I go see if I go taller than the tree line, then it's obvious that that tree is standing 
in front of that tree line. I'll keep this one. Boy, see how that lighter color, this is the reason for starting with dark first, is that lighter color just swallows up the dark paint. The dark, the dark paint is fairly transparent where the lighter colors are, are a lot more opaque. Now see, I, I've got these the same size and I don't want that, so I'm going to make that one, this one at the edge, a little taller. And see that having this tree a little taller over here, see I've got this going up so it keeps the viewer from running off that side of the page. And then this tree kind of acts as a stop to keep the viewer from going off the left side of the page. You don't want the viewer going to the next painting in the gallery. You want them, you want to stop them here so they stay with your painting. Now, if I were doing a really large painting, I could, uh, you know, I could put tree trunks in, and, you know, I, you know, maybe I'll put a little, you know, streak across the valley here, and I can, I've got that little streak. Now I'm going to clean my brush out really good. One of the ways I can direct the viewer over to these trees is by taking some warm blue and white. And let's see here. Is that... And I can make a, a little river that now let see the let the let the, the the paint color you see how this over here the, the my blue gets almost invisible and that's that's fine because what happens is there's almost no contrast, more and more and more contrast as it gets over into these trees. And then I can bring the viewer to right here, another little one there, maybe, and just kind of trap the viewer in the, that's the most, kind of the most interesting part of the composition right there in the foreground. So I'm, I'm, the viewer can come over here, moves up, and then these diagonals bring the viewer down, and then this angle brings the viewer back into the picture again. So you keep the viewer going in a circle. Now, the, which digresses from the actual lesson. The lesson is take a bad photograph and do somewhere between three and seven shapes and do a value study. Uprights in the foreground are the darkest value. Uprights in the background are the, are the, the are a little lighter. The uprights behind that are a little lighter and the uprights behind that are a little lighter and then the ground, the horizontals, are a little lighter, and then the sky is the lightest. If you do, just do as many of these as you can put up with, as you can stand. This, you've got to get every painting you do, whether it's, you know, 48 by 60 or 5 by 7, you've got to do this first. The first step is to get your values in so you can see the depth. The, the, the way you can tell most amateur painting is because, you know, the illustration might be good, but you can't see believable depth, and that's what makes it not feel professional. Start with the believable depth first, and then build your detail on top of that. But see, don't copy your photograph. See, there's, there's, in that photograph, there's really no depth. I believe the depth in it because it's a photograph, and my mind, so my mind believes it. But if I painted that, it would just look like I copied a photograph. It wouldn't look like it was outdoors. And try to do, try to do one a day. If you paint every day, your progress really, really picks up. Or do two a day, or three a day. But have fun painting.